we employers at last are coming together to see that our interests and the interests of capital are properly protected. And we're in for a time of steadily increasing prosperity. <laughs> On the night the inspector calls, the Burlings are celebrating Sheila and Gerald's engagement. A jovial Arthur Burling speaks freely of his wealth and good fortune. I <laughs> don't want to lecture you two young fellows again, but what so many of you don't seem to understand is that now things are so much easier. A man has to make his own way. He has to look after himself and his family too, of course, when he has one. <laughs> And so long as he does that, he won't come to much harm. Priestley's socialist views embraced the sharing of wealth and responsibility. People needed to work together as a community and look after one another. The rich, for instance, could help the poor by paying higher taxes. <laughs> Arthur Burling's ideology is the opposite of Priestley's. He's a staunch capitalist and isn't afraid to sing the praises of greed and self-preservation. But the way some of these cranks talk and write now, you'd think that everybody has to look after everybody else, eh? <laughs> As if we were all mixed up together like bees in a hive. <laughs> ah, community and all that nonsense. <laughs> but take my word for it, you youngsters. I have learnt in the good hard school of experience that a man has to mind his own business and look after himself and his own and then, oh, I wonder who that can be. The inspector arrives bearing news of Eva Smith's suicide, which further exposes the Burling's selfish behaviour and sense of entitlement. For the first time, they are made to realize that their actions have consequences. In the interests of preserving profits, Arthur Burling refused Eva a pay increase. Sheila had her fired because Eva hurt her vanity. Gerald took her as his mistress out of lust, while Eric just used her for the end of a stupid drunken evening as if she was an animal, a thing, not a person. Pregnant with Eric's child, Eva was denied assistance by the women's charity organization thanks to Sybil Burling. Was it owing to your influence as the most prominent member of the committee that help was refused the girl? Possibly. Was it or was it not your influence? I didn't like her manner. She'd impertinently made use of our name, though pretended afterwards it happened to be the first she'd thought of. She had to admit, after I began questioning her, that she had no claim to the name, that she wasn't married, and that the story she'd told at first about her husband who deserted her was quite false. Priestley publicly supported the formation of the National Health Service a healthcare system designed to provide equal access for everyone to medical and health services, including the country's underprivileged. He observed that charities were often run by wealthy people like Sybil Burling, who had no personal experience of poverty and desperation.